I've been studying elephants for nearly 45 years, and that's involved doing behavior studies and later very much applied work connected with the ivory trade and the impact that was having on the elephant. So for 20 years I studied the terrible effect of the ivory trade on the elephants. Latterly I went back to the bush, resumed my behavior studies and founded the organization Save the Elephants, which is a British non-profit that operates in Kenya and in a few other African countries as well. So tell me a little bit about the elephants that you work with and uh, what their status is today. The elephants I work with directly are a very nice population living in the north of Kenya in the Samburu National Reserve and they go across into Buffalo Springs National Reserve. It's almost like an elephant paradise or has been until recently because the elephants had plenty to eat they were well protected and they were very used to people. Just a few years ago though, the price of ivory started rising and we had a simultaneous disaster in a drought. So we went through the most terrible drought. That was in 2008 and 2009. And then the way Africa often is, a country of total extremes, the rains came and with the rains came ferocious flash floods that actually wiped our camp away. About half of it was washed straight into the river. And that just about three months ago? That was, yes. about, that was on March the 4th, 2010. And my wife, who also has a tourist camp called Elephant Watch Camp, and she's a little bit upriver, she was able to give us just a few minutes of warning that the waters were on their way and she was completely swept out, just managed to rescue her guests in time, and some of her employees actually had to climb trees for their lives to get away from the raging waters mm. that came right through her camp. So everything was either destroyed or covered in thick layers of mud, and we've been kind of digging ourselves out of the mud for the last few months. But just to complicate the matter, <laughs> There's a, there was a big political crisis that took place when a couple of African countries asked to be allowed to sell their ivory stocks. And this put the whole conservation world into a ferment because it had been agreed two years earlier that only southern African countries could sell off their ivory stocks in a one-off sale and then there would be a nine-year moratorium so these two countries were breaking that nine-year moratorium. They said, well, we're allowed to. It's in the small print. It was agreed. And there was a lot of discussion about that. But I saw that as a very big threat. I saw it as a very big threat because they were claiming elephants were no longer endangered. They were claiming that their ivory stocks came from animals that had just died of natural Nat mortality. But we knew that, in fact, there was a lot of illicit poaching going along in those two countries. So we fought that motion at the CITES Treaty, and I'm glad to say that they were denied their application. So there's been a lot going on in the last few years for Save the Elephants and our work. But I'm glad to say that we've recovered from the flood. There were some very dona generous donations came in, and now we're looking to address some more of the long-term problems. Mm. And I think one of the chief long-term problems all comes down to one word, which is China. This desire for ivory is a great threat. And the Chinese have developed a great interest in Africa. They're coming in um, a serious way to get resources that they need and most of them are not at all aware of the dangers to the environment of using products from endangered species. So our next mission is going to be to actually take the results of our research to China and to contact Chinese academics, get respectable in the eyes of the government and try to inform the Chinese public not only um, of the 
dangers of buying ivory, but also to try to develop an affection on their part by sharing with them what we know about elephants. So we're going to open up our research camp. We're going to invite Chinese interns to come and join us in the work. And I think we're going to join up with some groups who make beautiful little short movies that explain the dangers of buying wildlife products. Because when you buy wildlife products, you cause killing.